So in the earlier lesson, we took a slightly simplistic view of the way we measure potential energy of two charges in a uniform electric field. But the concept of electric potential energy can very well be applied to a charge in any static electric field generated by a charge distribution. So let us find the work done on a test charge Q0 that is placed in an electric field produced by a charge Q. Let us start with a simpler situation where Q0 moves readily in a straight line like this and we can say that Coulomb's law tells us that the force on such a charge would be 1 upon 4 pi epsilon Q Q0 upon R square when it is at a distance R and we also know that this force changes as the distance R changes. We would therefore need to use integration to find the work done by this force on Q0 when we move it from say an initial point I to final point F. So say the force at this point is FR and the force moves a test charge at distance dr, then we can say that the work done is force at this point into displacement dr, and then we go about integrating it from ri to rf, and if you put the value of fr here, and then integrate, what you get is this expression. And you can see that the work done by this force as the charge moves from i to f, depends only on the initial distance Ri and the final distance Rf or simply put only on the endpoints. But what if we have a setup where I and F are not on the same radial line and the charge takes a random path like this? Well, if the test charge moves the distance dl, say here, and the angle between the force at that point and dl is alpha, we say that the work done is f dot dl, which equals f cos alpha dl. And then to find total work done between ri and rf, we simply integrate this expression. But if you look at this figure closely, what you will find is that cos alpha is equal to dr divided by dl or cos alpha dl is equal to dr. In other words, what this tells us is that the work done during displacement dl is dependent only on the change in radial distance dr when the two charges are at a distance r. And the work done under this situation is also the expression we derived earlier. So you see this expression of work done is valid for any path the test charge takes. In summary, the work done on test charge Q0 by an electric field E produced by charge Q depends only on the start and the end point that is Ri and Rf and the route the charge took in between the final and the end point does not affect the magnitude of work done. You may also like to note that if we take the charge back to the original position, the work done would be this, that is just the integral limits with a flip. And we know that this integral is minus of this integral. So if we were to find the total work done when the charge moves from I to F and then back to I, the total work done would be zero. And this would be true for any loop you take in moving the charge. So such forces where the total work done when moving the body from point I to F and then back is zero are called conservative forces. Alternately, if the work done in moving a charge from point I to F is same for any path we take, the force is termed conservative. And since this is a conservative force. It gives us an opportunity to link the change in potential energy with work done. So if you compare this equation with this, we can say that the potential energy to be ui equal to q q0 divided by 4 pi epsilon ri when q0 
naught is at a distance ri from q and uf as q q naught divided by 4 pi epsilon rf when it is at a distance rf from q thus more generally potential energy u when charge q naught is at any distance say r can be written as u is equal to 1 upon 4 pi epsilon q q naught by r and you can use this equation irrespective of the signs of the charges the potential energy will be positive when the charges are same sign and negative when they are of opposite sign well another important concept that you will need to understand is that potential energy is always defined relative to a reference point where we say u is equal to zero this is you could say quite like when we measure the potential energy of a ball placed above the earth at a height h as mgh but on the surface of the earth we assume h as zero and therefore we say that the potential energy here is zero so the earth's surface becomes our reference point when we deal with gravitational potential energy quite the same way we need to establish a reference point where the electric potential energy of this system is zero well you can see that if we take r as infinity the u value becomes zero then if we look at this expression of work that needs to be done when you move the charge from i to f and we take rf as infinity then work done to move charge from i to infinity becomes equal to this and this is nothing but the potential energy of the charge at position i so looking at this we can say that the u value or the potential energy at any point say r initial is equal to the work that would need to be done on a test charge q naught by the field of q if we move q naught from initial distance ri to infinity now if q and q naught happen to have the same sign the two would repel each other and the work done would be positive since the direction of force and displacement would be the same and you would also be positive at any finite separation but if the charges have opposite signs the interaction is attractive and the work done will be negative since you see the direction of the force and displacement is continuously opposite or in other words the force is trying to slow down the charge q naught as it tries to move towards infinity hence negative work is getting done and you would also be negative for any finite separation well you must also remember a very important fact that the potential energy u is a shared property of the two charges as such the potential energy or u value is the value of q and q naught system and not of either of the charges considered alone and it is evident that this is the case since both q and q naught appear in the formula for potential energy so if the distance between q and q naught changes from ri to rf then the change in potential energy is the same irrespective of which charge moves even if charge q moved instead of q naught the change in potential energy will be the same so we should never use the term electric potential energy of a point charge because potential energy always belongs to a system of charges and not an individual charge now let us say that the electric field in which charge is placed is due to several point charges at various distances from charge q naught then while the electric field value at the point is a vector sum of electric field due to each charge the potential energy is the algebraic sum of the contributions from each charge so we could write this equation for several charges as this that can be simplified to this expression uh, we can also see that the potential energy of the system would also become zero 
when charge q naught is at an infinite distance from each of these charges or r1 r2 r3 etc are infinite well this equation gives potential energy of the system when q naught is taken to infinity in presence of these charges and their electric field but then we must also think that there has to be some potential energy associated with setting up all these charges together the way they are so what we need to do is imagine that each of these charges are taken to infinity one at a time and find what is the work done in doing so this essentially means finding the potential energy associated with each charge as it has paired up with all other charges and as we keep removing each charge the number of pairs keep reducing so uh, the potential energy when the first charge is removed is the highest since it has paired up with all other charges and it keeps reducing till you go down to the last charge that would then have zero potential energy since it would require zero work to be done to take it to infinity since there is no charge left behind against whose electric field the charge needs to move so as an example if you were to set up this system of three charges the potential energy of the system would be potential energy due to one and two potential energy due to two and three and potential energy due to three and one which would equal to this expression so as a more general formula we could say that the potential energy of assembling a bunch of charges can be written as this now this formula sums up the potential energy associated with each pair of charges i and j separated by a distance r i j and we never allow i equal to j since it would mean interaction of particle with itself that would be meaningless so what we've seen so far is that when we let the test charge move from a to b it is a natural movement since the charge is getting moved by the electric field quite the way a ball would roll down a hill under the force of gravitational field in such a case positive work is done by the field on the test charge and this work done is equal to minus delta u or minus ub minus ua which equals ua minus ub well there's another way of coming to the same conclusion and that is in terms of work done by an external force when we move the charge from say b with potential energy ub to point a where the potential energy is ua what we say is that an external force needs to do a certain amount of positive work in pushing the test charge because it is being resisted by force of electric field due to this positive charge q and you can see that this external force should be equal and opposite to the force of electric field so that it just about moves the charge towards a without building up velocity so this work done on the charge shows up as increase in potential energy of the charge so we say that the potential energy change u a minus u b is the work done by an external force in moving charge from b to a against the electric force you can also see that when an external force pushes the charge against the field the charge gains potential energy this also seems natural if you compare the situation to a ball that is pushed up the hill by an external force the ball ends up gaining potential energy due to this external force that acts on it and makes it climb up against the gravitational field so if you like this video go ahead and give it a thumbs up and please do not forget to subscribe to this channel for many more interesting videos